to Let's Talk Kingdom with Katrina. So glad you decided to join us today. I am so excited. This is 2018, a new year, and God is getting ready to do some great things in the kingdom of God. So tonight, we are so elated to have a beautiful couple with us tonight, Jerome and Kimberly Nesbitt. They are going to be talking about marriage restoration, and we all know that the enemy does not like marriage. But God is the one that orchestrated marriage. Oh. So he is the one that can restore and he can pull everything back together when it comes out of alignment. So tonight they're going to share a little bit about their marriage and how God has restored them. So welcome to Let's Talk Kingdom. So let me tell you a little bit about Jerome and Kim Nesbeth. Jerome was born in Moles, Moles, Merles. Merles Inlet, South Carolina, the second oldest of six, and he's a former North Carolina State Correction Officer. Yes. My God. Kim is a native of Charlotte. There's not too many of us left, nope. Kim. <laughs> and she's the youngest yes. of three. Jerome and Kim have been married for eight years and have a blended family of five children and four grandchildren. God, family, and friends reign supreme in their lives, just in that order. Jerome enjoys fitness, nutrition, and self-defense, while Kim enjoys music, singing, fashion, and entertaining. And she loves comedic TV shows? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, a lot of life. We have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> at the present time, Jerome is employed at ATI uh, Specialty Materials, and Kim works at Capital Anesthesia uh, Billing Services. So tonight, I want you to join us as we talk about marriage restoration. So... Tell me a little bit about you guys. How did you meet? Wow. We actually met wow. over 20 something years ago when we yes. both worked for Carolina Bedrooms. Um, I was married at the time mm -hmm. and he had moved here for just a, a change of, of life. Right. But um, he eventually moved back to take care of your parents. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't seen each other in over 18 years. Wow. Um, at that time, I was going through a divorce, mm -hmm. but um, I started going to the gym where he was a personal trainer. Okay. Um, funny story. I'm walking through, I'm being shown the gym, and I hear someone scream out my name, Kim Byram. And I'm like, I know that voice. It can only be. And sure enough, it was him. Mm -hmm. And he he actually started training me. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I was still married at the time. Um, after my husband and I separated, mm -hmm. um, he kind of started doing a little pursuing there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I was I was kind of leery, kind of leery. But we eventually did start dating. Mm -hmm. We dated for two years, and we got married in two thousand and nine. Wow. Well, you want to put a little bit into that? Because I know sometimes men have a different Yeah, he's got a little bit different. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the only difference is that we shared a lot of times together before that, mm -hmm. even at work, um, which she didn't know it at the time. I was very, very interested in her, even mm -hmm. though she was married. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I was always taught, never go there. Yes. Never. Yes. yes. So... Um, like she said, I had to move back because my mom got sick. Mm -hmm. So, um, and after she died, um, I stayed a little while longer and helped take care of my dad and mm -hmm. just make sure he was okay. Then I moved back, and like she said, we were we met at the gym where I was working, and mm -hmm. like when I first saw, I couldn't believe it was her because it, I haven't seen her in so long, mm -hmm. and it was just a good feeling to see her again and I'm happy just to know that she remembered me. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cute. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was, uh, and ever since then, it was, uh, it was just heaven, you know. And yes, I pursued her. Oh, yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Y'all hear yes. that, guys? Men are to pursue the women. Women, you're not to pursue the men. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Exactly. So if you were going to give a name to what God is doing with uh, both of you, uh, your ministry, what would you call it? 
I was actually talking with your assistant and we were coming up with things and she said, what do you think about reclaim? Mm -hmm. And I said, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because to me, it actually began in 2013 mm -hmm. where I had to begin claiming my marriage over mm -hmm. because that's when I felt like I lost him. Mm -hmm. And it was February, 2013. Mm -hmm. And remember it like it was yesterday because it was on my birthday. And he was starting to, to really go through some things and I could see a difference. Mm -hmm. He looked the same to other people. Mm -hmm. But that morning before he left, mm -hmm. he said to me, I had been up all night. It was the first year without my mom, mm -hmm. my first birthday, because she passed in 2012. Mm -hmm. And he asked me what was wrong and we kind of talked about it. And what he said to me that morning, I couldn't conceive. He said, I don't know why I don't love you the way you love me. Wow. And I was like, wow. And and that just really, really crushed me. I actually had a day planned with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I texted her. She was at the house. And I told her, I said, when you wake up, just leave. And I was in the bedroom with the door locked. You know, in bed. And that was the day that I had to start letting God change me. Um, because... I, I had lost him, you know. Yeah. Jerome, what do you think um, God was doing with you during this time where you felt like you no longer could connect with your wife? Because sometimes, or what, was there something that brought that disconnect? Because sometimes there are things that bring that disconnect. Right. But was there something that you were going through at the time that brought that disconnect from Kim? Did you feel like you were going, a lot of men feel like they're going through like a midlife crisis or something. Kind of talk about mm -hmm. that reclaiming and, the, and where you were at that place in order to get back to where you are, or where you are now. At that time, I didn't know really who I was. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't the man that came married. Um, I knew how I was raised by my parents. I knew right from wrong. And nothing my wife said did change changed me at all. And it was hard seeing her go through this, knowing that I was trying but and asking God to help me, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And every time we would go to church, you know, I praise God just like I do now, but more so. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I always just ask God, help me, help me get out of this and make me, help me to love my wife and make the right decisions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would do good for maybe a day or two, and then all of a sudden it's right back. And it felt like I was burdened with so much pressure from the world, yes, from yes. from family, from friends, from work, um, and even my wife. Mm -hmm. And just feel like it, everything was just crowding me. Like I couldn't hardly breathe, you know? Yeah. And home wasn't home. Yeah. You know, I would go, come from work, go to the gym, work out. I might get home about 7, 7.30, you know? And start the whole day all over again wow. the next day. So, wow. Kim, you want to? Yeah, because I, I want to be, I want to be transparent with your audience because I want them to know how God yes. restored this yes. and, and be truthful. Yes. I knew that there was someone else, yes. and and I knew that that's where he was spending his time, mm -hmm. and I always would tell him. Where you spend your time is where your heart is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he would say he's not comfortable here, you know, that things were not the way they should be. But I knew that that spirit that I was trying to raise up in our home mm -hmm. was fighting him. Yes. And December 31st, 2013, and disclaimer audience, when you tell God, that you want him to do something mm -hmm. and he knows that you're crying out from the depths of your soul yes. because he knows the difference in our cries for help yes he does i said to him december 31st 2013 do whatever you need to do 
whatever it takes for him to realize that you're not a Sunday God only, mm -hmm. but you're Monday through Sunday, yes. and you are 24-7, 365. Yes. Let thy will be done. Mm -hmm. If I need to be your catalyst, I will be. 2014, he allowed the gates of hell to open yes. in our lives. And I, act, I asked him to, because our whatever it takes with God yeah. is not his whatever it takes. It looks totally different. That's right. That's it right. looks totally different. That's right. And, and, he, and he allowed it. Mm. He allowed it. That's powerful. Because when you ask God to come in and do what he needs to do to restore and to fix something, you need to be ready to allow him to do whatever yeah. it takes. It's going to take some crying. It's going to take some sacrifice. Because I know it took some sacrifice. Talk, Because there was a time when you guys also separated. So talk about that time when you left Kim and when God decided to um, give you the okay to come back. When when 2014 hit and things began, began to get really tense and he grew more distant. Um, transparency again. She was. She became pregnant, um, but I had lost my job, so I had nowhere to go. So it was like God put me where I couldn't do anything but all day long cry out to Him. Um, when it, and I had made up in my mind, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving my husband. It doesn't matter. But God was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you better be careful. Right. You ask God. Tell him your plan, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the day when he said, It's time for you to go, mm -hmm. I laid on the floor of our bedroom and I literally screamed out, No. He was like, You have got to give him to me. Yes. You've done your part. It's my turn. Wow. Leave him with me. Mm. So I was like, I have no job, I have nowhere to go. I could have went to my brother, yeah. but I didn't want to live on my brother, I didn't have a job. So I eventually was blessed with a temp position, found a place to live, and September 26, 2014, that's when I was permitted to leave. We, um, he didn't even know. Now he knew, I want him to talk to you about this, okay. because he knew I was packing, mm -hmm. because we had an empty room mm -hmm. where everything was. Yes, and every day I would walk by that room and just look inside, and each day there would be more and more things accumulated in the room. And I knew that she was serious about moving at that point. Mm -hmm. But nothing inside of me could tell her, no, stay, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. As much as I wanted to, I could not utter those words. And the day that I came home and she had a note on the kitchen counter explaining why she left. And right then it just hit me. God, she meant that. Mm -hmm. Did you She's think? She, did you think she actually was gonna leave? A part of me knew that she was gonna leave, and then there's that part deep down inside I didn't want her to leave, but I couldn't ask her not to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that she was gone, it was like reality. You know, kind of slapped me in the face, like, oh my God, she's gone. Yeah. Now what am I going to do? So, I was kind of numb for months. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I had a child on the way, and that took a lot of my focus in making sure that uh, she comes into the world okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a Christmas. Um, the young lady that I had the child with, um, Mia, um, they took a trip to New York. And when they got there, I stayed in hotels and they stayed with, you know, her mom. Mm -hmm. During that time, sitting in that hotel, I think I called you. You did. Okay. Christmas Day. Christmas Day, because my mom was on her. And wanted to know how she was doing. 
And at the same time, let them know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after we came back, there was a service at church, I think in January or February. Our pastor, uh, Lorraine Livingston, had a, uh, an eye-opening service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was, I had to get everything out of me yeah. at that point. Yeah. You know, so I I think for about two, three weeks straight, I cried almost every day. I won't go back, I won't go back, yeah, so, um, yeah. Well, if you had to, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back, because we have some additional questions. I know sure. our uh, viewing audience has some, a lot sure. of questions that we're going to uh, touch it base on, but... Um, Come back and join us on Let's Talk Kingdom with Katrina. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kingdom with Katrina. We're going to finish up our interview with uh, Kimberly and Jerome talking about marriage restoration, and we're going to go straight into it. I have another question because yes. I know earlier you were telling us about that there was a child on the way. Right. And talk about that, um, how it affected your relationship when you decided to come back and also the dynamics of your family because you know you talked about having children and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you had grandchildren as yes, well yes. so yes. talk about that dyna dynamics because I'm pretty sure that our listening audience and viewing audience want to know what did they think what did they feel you know how did they treat you you know and that right there can take the rest of the show wow. I'm pretty sure it can wow Yes. On, yes. on my end, when the kids found out, we were all like, it's a baby. All of them are grown. All of the kids are grown. Mm -hmm. So it was like, this kid is going to be rotten because she's going to have all adult siblings. Mm -hmm. um, those were my words to him when, we, when I found out she was pregnant. We can get through this. Mm -hmm. It's a baby. But um, he didn't have the same. He didn't see it the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. How did you see it, Jerome? I really didn't want to put her through any of this because mm -hmm. I knew it would be hard. Mm -hmm. um, she told me, we're in this together. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. I'll stay with you. But I couldn't do that to her. I couldn't do that. And so we talked about it, and I prayed about it, mm -hmm. but eventually she left. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the hardest thing I had to do, and I was embarrassed, mm -hmm. I was ashamed. I was, I was afraid just to talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. Didn't want anyone to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when she left, my brother, we kept in contact pretty often, um, but God touched me. Mm -hmm. He opened my eyes to everything that I've done. And I knew what I had to do. Yeah. First, I had to trust and believe in him. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I had to free myself, mm -hmm. open up myself to yes. whatever he has in store for me. Yes. And I had to talk to my family, mm -hmm. apologize to them. I tried apologizing to Kim, but she wasn't hearing it. <laughs> she wasn't Not hearing it. Not for a that. while, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I talked to all my family, told them how I felt. Um, um, they wasn't asking for any sympathy. Yeah. Just want them to know yeah. that I, I'm sorry that I hurt them all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because of my actions. Yes. yes. So then I again tried to pursue. Him at all costs, any dinner, just a conversation, but 
she wasn't having none of that. So again, um, I went to a satellite church that we have and I met um, some different people who didn't even know us mm -hmm. and really got close to them. Mm -hmm. So I started, you know, seeing her on the screen. It's like, wow. There she is. Because she was doing praise and worship. Right. She was, she's right. praise and worship. Right. Right. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what have I done? Oh, she's so beautiful. I mean, that's all I could think about. It was like know? God just reopened oh, your, your eyes, eyes to right. where she really, right. really was. Because I was, I was blind. I didn't hear nothing no one had to say. I was a mess. I was really a mess. I mean, and I, I told my wife this. I mean, I was acting stupid. I mean, the things that I've done and uh, things that I've said, that wasn't me. That was wow. someone else. It was not me. Isn't it wonderful how God can show you yourself? Yes. And how yes. once you release all of that, he can come back and even restore you. Right. Because he had to restore right. you mm -hmm. and put you back in right, right. perspective exactly. before he could release you back right. to her right. and exactly. bring that back exactly. together again. Right. And that's that's exactly Trina how it happened because after two and a half years we had actually started the divorce process. Yes, we did. We had the yes, separation we papers, we mm -hmm. had, you know, everything. But we would have conversations and a lot of the conversations were pertaining to that right. somewhere in between that it was like you want to have dinner well you no know, because he had allowed me to step out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see it from the outside mm -hmm. see as long as i was there on the inside all i could see was being there supporting my husband yes once he allowed me to step out i was like do i even want to handle this mm -hmm. do i even want to deal with this mm -hmm. so no and i i shut him down for like a year don't call me leave me alone i've got to heal yes, yes. i've got to heal right. that was hard but he did but his sermon was january of 2015. Yes. my sermon was january 1st 2016. Mm -hmm. Everything, God had a timeline, yes. 14, 15, 16. Yes, he did. And that day, sitting in the choir loft, listening to that message, he was sitting in the balcony. God said, I need you to open your eyes and look at what you asked me to do. Mm -hmm. You asked me for a miracle. Open your eyes and look at it. And I looked up there at him and I lost it. I was a mess. I was a mess. Because even though hearing him, mm -hmm. because the one thing about me and anybody that knows me, I require consistency. Yes. I'm structured. Yes. 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 And even though I'm listening to him and I'm seeing all of this, I'm like, okay, what are you trying what are you trying to do? Okay, this this align. Mm -hmm. But he was consistent mm -hmm. in his pursuit. Mm -hmm. And I heard the difference. And I heard the references to God. Mm -hmm. Because I used to always tell him, God is gonna get tired, tired, and when enough is enough. Mm -hmm. But once I did that, and that Sunday, I went down to the altar, mm -hmm. and he came down with to me, and I just locked him, and I just lost it. But that's when I saw him mm -hmm. for who God was turning him into, the miracle. And people look for miracles to be in blinded eyes opening and lane walking. That's all fine and good, and God can still do those things. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But this, yes. it's a miracle. That's yes. our miracle. Yes. Because people that knew us, they were like, oh, that's done. Wow. That's done. Mm. Now, there are singles, couples listening, mm -hmm. viewing. What would you say to them about restoration? If you believe that that person that you're with is who God intended for you to be with, First of all, you've got to let forgiveness become life. Yes. Yes. It's got to be life. Yes. Because yes. that was the only way I was going to be able to get back. I knew I had to forgive him. Mm -hmm. I had to forgive her. Mm -hmm. Because there were days that forgiveness was not pretty. That was totally not a thing. I would have to lay in the bed and ask God to give me what he required yes. so that my flesh wouldn't take over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... If, if you're gonna do it, love holds no count of wrong. Yes. So if you're gonna do it, mm. you've gotta let it go. Wow. 
and you can't make that person relive it every time something happens. Yes, yes. Wow, that's powerful. That's that's what it is to forgive someone Mm -hmm. and to know that forgiveness is not just for you, but it's for the other person as well in order for the blessings to continue to to be bestowed upon you Mm -hmm. and that person that you've released. Mm -hmm. Tell our listening audience and our viewing audience how they can get in touch with you to come and share your story. We just have a few minutes. I can, you can reach us by email at klnesbitt51 at gmail.com. My cell is 704-488-8780. Jerome is 704-254-8370. Jerome. Yes. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know somebody has been healed, restored because of your testimony. We thank you for listening to Let's Talk Kingdom with Katrina and join us again as we have those that are coming on and telling you about the great things that God is doing in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Awesome.